It's Shakespeare who coined this phrase in Romeo and Juliet. Here we're going to explore the main names for sexual infections down throughout the ages. If you look at the various creation myths or stories written in many of the major holy books of the world, you'll see that women often get the blame for most things. And VD, or venereal diseases, is no exception. The V part of this, venereal, comes from Venus, the goddess of love. In anatomy books from the 1600s onwards, what was called the symphysis pubis in males was called the mons veneris in females. So, maybe to move away from some notions of gender blame of women, the term changed from VD to sexually transmitted diseases in the first half of the 20th century, and it's the term that's still preferred in parts of the USA. But in the UK and most other countries of the world, the preferred term is STI, or sexually transmitted infections, because theoretically it's an infection that's passed, not a disease. And some people use the term sexually acquired infections, or SAIs, to remind people to look after themselves in sex as well as looking after others. So to shift the notion from transmission to responsibility in protecting against acquiring infection. But we must always be aware that there are many people the world over who are not able to protect themselves against acquiring infections. And there's a good argument to say that we should just call them sexual infections, just as we do with kidney infections or chest infections or other types of infections, help to destigmatize them. A common error I see in many students' work is when they put an apostrophe in. That makes it the genitive case rather than simply just the plural. Also, in referring to people living with HIV, it's better to say PLWHIV rather than HIV positive. And in writing the acronym AIDS, always use full capitals. The first of two other important points to remember is that not all genital infections are sexually acquired or transmitted. The second important point to remember is that not all sexual infections are genital. Remember, you can get certain infections down the throat or up the bum. One of the biggest problems with sexual infections is that people often associate them with stigma and guilt tripping. Even referring to somebody as promiscuous, for example, is a moralist term and not a sexual term. It needs challenging. And there are even so many healthcare professionals who would find talking about sex, sexual health and sexualities something difficult to do. Therefore, there's a lot of work we can do in encouraging people to talk more about sexual health and their well-being. Even using the term unprotected sex can be misleading and sometimes even judgmental. So it's better to use the phrase condomless sex. And that goes to show clever dicks do it in a condom. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this. Feel free to contact me on Twitter.